I'm going to keep this sort of chat about this new nutritional program. Very, I'm going to leave it. I'll try and do it. Off. What am I on about? Ah, oh, whatever. So what I'm going to do and say is that I've had five applicants already for the new online nutritional program. If you want to be one of the applicants that applies, or if you want to be in with a chance of £150 worth of online coaching with regards to nutrition via a video series which starts on the 1st of November, join the group below this video in the comment section. Join it, find out how you can apply because the information is in the group and we'll go from there. There they are. The lads hard at work making unnecessary noise whilst I'm trying to edit my vlogs. Quite scared at the moment actually because he's been, um, I don't know, how do I do this if I'm opposite? That's it, him there. Been sort of grinding. Um, you know, sparks going everywhere. Van there. With oil in it. If that oil catches a spark, I'll probably never see another vlog again. Yesterday, right, I saw a guy get sort of mugged off on um, Instagram. He's a fellow flexible dieter with a huge following. And what it was is that he, someone commented underneath it saying something like, Oh, you just cook this food, you don't actually eat it. I mean, why would someone go through all that effort to, to, to cooking the food and making it look awesome and then not eating it? I still baffles me to this day, you know, as to why some people think that you can't eat chocolate sometimes and, and, and make progress. It really does baffle me. But that shows that how many people are still so uneducated with regards to nutrition because they obviously don't think that you can eat those kind of foods when in reality you can as long as other aspects of your diet are in place of course trying to find some green hairspray is proving to be just as difficult as trying to find the Loch Ness Monster where can I find some? if you're in the Cardiff area where can I get green hairspray from? just do my head in so not quite green hairspray but I did manage to get purple marigolds for Saturday yes you guessed it I'm going as the Joker. So, yeah, off to train now. A procession. You may have noticed that I always tend to do, or tend to say on the videos, upper or lower. I never sort of say chest day or shoulders day or forearms day or ankles day. But the reason for this is quite a simple reason, really, is partly down to the fact that as a natural. Um, so I'm assuming that if you're watching this, you're a natural. By natural, I mean someone who's not on steroids. Um, as a natural, then you are going to be, you know, or you're not going to be able to recover from putting that much volume and stress on your body. Um, doing sort of singular body splits, so like just doing a chest day. As to what you are, if you're going to be splitting your sort of or, or, or hitting a muscle group with less volume but more often throughout the week um, because obviously when you see these bodybuilders, the famous ones like Kai Green and all that, they, they smash one body part a session that's fine because they can recover from it because they are on gear. Um, so for someone who's like yourself who's a natural then this isn't sort of optimal for you because you're not going to be able to perform as well um, and recover as well than someone who is on gear and if you try and you know sort of smash one body part and you're, you're not going to get the most optimal results as a beginner train a body part more often well yeah more than once a week <laughs> that I've picked up on actually since being down at UFIT. Uh, it's great because there's absolutely loads of squat racks in there. Loads, which is awesome and a lot of people are, 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 are squatting and deadlifting and benching and that's good because you can have a lot more volume doing exercises like that than other ones but it doesn't mean to say that you have to do them. Anyway I'm going off track back to the topic. So something that I'm noticing 
And something that I want you to take into consideration is the walkouts during the squat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the walkouts that I see some, you know, usual gym users and gym goers um, do and how they perform the walkout. And I'm going to compare it to my client Anest's. So, usual gym goer. Let's say this is the rack, okay? So it's there. Uh, I'll do the thing, the arm rack, and then it's, it's like it's a, a race. So it's there, and it's there, there, and off they go. No! Slow it down. So if we have a look at Anest's. So what you'll notice with my client Anest is that she takes a little step back with her left foot, and then goes wide with her right and wide with her left. Look how close she is to, the, is to the pins. Because if she fucks up, if she messes up, she has not got far to go to the pins at all. Whereas if you're here, you're there, you're there, and you're back here, pins are there, you're there. Oh, I'm gonna fuck up! Oh, <laughs> fuck your head in the floor. Gone. Knackered. So, like this. Your feet are here, take one step back, wide, wide, you're ready to squat. Take it from someone who's walked up too far before and fucked up.